All right, hello, welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. We have today with our good old pal, uh, Orange Go 55. Please subscribe to this channel. I'll link it above. How are you today? I'm doing good, Ethan. Thank you for having me on. It's always fun. Oh, yes, it's been a while. Um, we have lots of cool things to talk about, uh, Disney and Universal today. And we're going to start off with a universal thing that's like Disney. Now, I don't know if you saw, uh, we'll see who ever passed. It's going to open March 27th at Universal Studios Hollywood. Now, I don't know if you saw like the press release or anything, but um, there's some cool tidbits here. And let's see. I think I have it on here. And one of them is that, well, one will be an, an Omni Mover attraction, which is cool. And I think it's kind of like a first for Universal. And then there'll also be, uh, oh, here it is, 64 animatronics, which is pretty cool. Um, another like big thing, almost first for Universal. With, this is the real interesting part, the hyper-realistic media and projection mapping. Now, doesn't that sound like the 2.5D, what happened? Two and a half D that um of making Minnie's runway railway. Yeah, it does. Um it, you know, I thought that that technology was uh I don't know what, what you want to call it, uh, like trademarked for Disney though. So mm -hmm. maybe it'll just be something very similar to that. It, that's interesting. And it's also very interesting that because Universal, everyone kind of kind of teases Universal because they always use screens. But I found it interesting that there's going to be like 60 plus animatronics or moving figures in this ride. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's, yeah. that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then this, let's see, state of the art optical enhanced gesture tracking technology. I guess it makes you look like a pet, which I <laughs> that's kind of like interesting because I guess they use like a facial recognition. And then it says, because it says everything from like the head tilt and stuff, like when you tilt your head, like the pet's head will tilt. Uh, seems pretty, really intriguing for me. Well, you know, I actually, I think this is a great addition to Universal Studios. Universal Studios, especially in Hollywood, needs something that really get like. I mean, we have this. We have the the, the tram tour, which which is a, which is a, a big selling point for Universal Hollywood. But really, outside of that, everything else is better in Florida, right? So mm -hmm. this is like a great ride because Florida's not getting this, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's like an exclusive thing to like all the Universal parks. It's pretty cool. It's cool. That's that's what we need here. We need an exclusive thing because you know we we kind of get the shaft a lot out here in Universal Hollywood compared to Florida. Florida is just killing it all the time, and then we're over here like just taking the crumbs, you know. But finally, we're getting something of our own, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they get the new theme parks and all the big things, and we're just get we just get a little, and they even take our studio. To, they take all our elements of the studio to and make a big ride, and we're standing all around. Like, wow. You get everything, Florida. And then, um, oh, yes, and the last thing here with the Ziegler of Pets, I thought that says the virtual line complements a non-traditional queue, which invites guests to explore the area at their leisure and freely roam the, roam the ride's corridors. I feel like that's like a, it's gonna, I feel like the whole queue seems like a, like a smuggler's run chess room type of thing, where it looks like, it looks, same, sounds like you'll be able to kind of explore each person's apartment before boarding the ride people and i think that's i think that's another pretty interesting thing i wonder if how that'd be cool if, uh cues eventually go that direction where everything's a virtual kind of line and you can explore the area while you're waiting that's kind of cool it, it definitely seems like disney and universal are going in that direction when it comes to like like queue like 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 queuing up like mm -hmm. between you know rise of the resistance and the boarding pass situation and like you said even like with smugglers run where you wait in that room the chess room and kind of mm -hmm. hang out and now with you know secret life of pets at universal it seems like they're really trying to like revolutionize you know waiting in line so to speak and, and it's changing and i think eventually 
I, I think this is the future. You know, I think that this is the direction that, that these that these theme park companies want to go in with this virtual queuing, and they'll change it and, and change the way that they approach it over time, and it'll probably get better and better as they go. But um, yeah, this is definitely the direction we're headed. <laughs> Yeah, it's a pretty. I, mean, I like it because the fact that you, you know, instead of standing in a line, you can like do other things. So that's the cool part. Now, some people don't like boarding pass system, which is, I guess that that particular thing makes sense. But the idea of the virtual queue, I like because you can like do other things while you're waiting for your spot. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting. It's a really interesting too. Like. um I wonder how this is going to work like eventually with a lot of like a lot of these attractions, like for example, Indiana Jones adventure, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's say that, let's say the industry goes in a virtual queue direction. It's going to be interesting. All the attractions that exist with these really long, lengthy, you know, snaking queues, what's going to happen to all that if it's like everything's virtual, right? It's going to be kind of mm -hmm. weird. It, it, it's going to be really interesting to see how this change to the industry of the virtual queuing you know, changes the infrastructure to a lot of these rides too, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, for like, yeah, definitely a place like Disney and Universal where we're kind of landlocked, a shorter queue, we can definitely save some space. So that'd be um, at least bonuses for us. Then have, we can reclaim some of the sidewalk potentially back if they do take away some of the, uh, the queues, like for Indiana Jones, like that outdoor courtyard area and just keep the bridge. That'd be very interesting. And, uh, Let's see what I was going to say. Oh, yes. Um, speaking of smugglers, run Chewy Mode's here. <laughs> and uh, it looks like, oh, God, I, I always forget. I read the rules three, like five times, and I always forget them because they seem kind of complicated. But <laughs> you need, like, a whole crew of six people. And before you even put your seatbelt on, you have to do these two set, uh, sets of rules. And then you can uh, see Chewy Mode. Uh, Chewie will be with you uh, instead of H Hondo, just like in the real Star Wars. I think that's awesome. And I think it's good because that increases the rewritability of Smuggler's Run since they still haven't added any other, you know, missions yet. Yeah, it does. It definitely increases the rewritability. And it also brings to question, I, the first thing I thought of when, when I heard of this, like, hidden, hidden Chewie mode, mm -hmm. the first thing I immediately... <laughs> excuse me, the first thing I immediately thought of was what other modes are there that we don't know about? Is, is there some, is there like Ray mode? Is there like, you know, uh, Poe mode? Like how, how many modes are there? I mean, you know, there, there's gotta be other ones that the Imagineers programmed into this thing. It's, so it's kind of interesting to see what else comes out in the next few weeks and months, if anything, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like there would be like the simple like software upgrade or something. They can like add new modes just like that, which would be pretty uh, again cool. And especially if they're not going to add a new mission, you know, increase that rewritability. And especially if you don't get it the first time, you'll probably want to go like again. Like took them, or I saw on uh, theme Dylan from Theme Park Obsession took them uh, three times to eventually get it right. So that's three more rides and Spiders Run that offer Disney. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's very cool. I, I definitely want to try it. it. Looks fun. And. Uh, and Hondo's cool, but nothing like going on with Chewie. Mm -mm -mm. No, yeah, Hondo's Hondo's a really cool character, but uh, I mean, come on, you know, Chewie's mm -hmm. legendary. You know, how do you beat Chewie? You know, Chewie's an icon, man. Like, wow! Like, I got excited just watching. It. I was like, ah, oh, Chewie's here! I want to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and uh, Smuggler's Run's gonna have some fast pass, so you can uh, go ahead and uh, go on that pretty soon i think but um but the monsters inc I, I don't know if you've seen my tweets but on monsters inc the ever since the fast pass and the max pass was initiated on that i've never seen the rides at 60 minutes so much in my entire lifetime and this is exactly why i didn't i think anyone didn't want uh this attraction to have stupid fast pass well, yeah, and you were you were right. You you were calling this like the minute they announced the fast pass for this attraction, and it's such a. See, this is the thing that really kind of confuses me. 
I don't, well, I don't understand the point of this. I mean, like you said, the, the attraction never had more than like a 10 or 15 minute wait on any given mm -hmm. day. It's not a vastly popular attraction. It's weird to me that they felt the need or whatever to add fast pass to it. I feel like there's something else at play. Like, I think you mentioned to me a couple of weeks ago that maybe it's, it's to increase the, the, um, attractiveness of, of the max pass maybe or something mm, like that yeah and, and that, that definitely seems plausible i mean it has to be something like that because this attraction is not that popular it did not it did not need this mm -hmm. and then the um what should call it? but yeah because i think the, the, they increased it and then announced smugglers run like a like a day before the the prices went up to 20 dollars for the max pass i was like oh wow and then, um, I guess now this way, it's one of the few uh, Max Pass rides that has like no height requirement. It's kind of appeals like to everyone, and I just think like a family of five, like four, four or five, because the kids probably won't want to go by themselves. So then the parents have to get the Max Pass, and that's like that's a hundred dollars right there off the Max Pass, and then the, it makes Ma yeah Max Pass more attractive because now there's these family rides and there's just more overall max rides in general but the way and i saw it in my shot the way it works it's kind of like a standby like it's standby like it's split in two since there obviously there's no fast path there was no fast pass i'm built for so it's like two sections and so it's really kind of stalled and weird they said when matt uh my shot tried it out um so it's a very hopefully they kind of at least fix that part because it sounds the way they describe it sounds very confusing. Um, the fact that they can it's like you go, then there's like the fast pass people come almost like right down the middle and you wait for them, then it, it stops and you it sounds like a like a traffic light almost where, <laughs> where there's um like a four way intersection, then you have to do wait these light cycles type. That's what they described and they showed a visual and that's what it looked like they come right through and make like, this kind of weird but it makes sense it's kind of weird because there's no fast design built for this attraction <laughs> yeah and it also kind of in in a weird way it kind of bums me out a little bit that they're that they're doing this for monsters because i was, I was hoping that disney would tackle the hollywood land area pretty soon and then i feel like mm -hmm. this is kind of a signal that it's not going or not going away anytime soon like it, we're, it's probably going to be at least a few years um mm -hmm. Which is kind of a bummer, but I guess that's expected because I guess I guess anything for, in that area wouldn't really happen until after the Avengers you take it anyway, I guess, right? Oh, oh yeah, I guess. And that's a, that's the funny thing. That's the funny thing I said. It's like, wow, the two attractions in the two areas that need to get renovated the most. <laughs> yeah, uh, Toby is a little bit different because I already had a fast pass, but and it can just be added to the you know the digital system that um tomorrowland system so it's not they're not really like they don't really have to build anything for altopia yeah. and monsters inc yeah. um, i guess they use the carts or whatever but it's funny how that like the two areas where everyone thinks their uh, improvements are coming they go and had and add the fast pass to those two rides yeah they're trolling disney's trolling hard man <laughs> they're <laughs> yeah. trolling us hard especially when they put those nice new retro planters out in front of the entrance. Yeah, yeah, what, those are pretty cool. Was that the concept art, or because I don't remember seeing that. No, we never got any art for that. That kind of came out of nowhere. And actually, those planters are exa an exact replica of of what used to be there with fountains back, like in the in the sixties when the land mm -hmm. first opened. There were fountains there that looked exactly the same way. And a lot of people were speculating: Are we going to get the fountains back? Are they going to be planters? And we found out they are going to be, in fact, you know, planters. But they look nice. They look cool. Yeah. Which means, like, my cool idea of, since seems like they're going in that direction, when and if they do that Tomorrowland um, renovation, that would be super cool if they bring back, like, a retro Tomorrowland when demolish the current people mover tracks, but maybe build, like, a, like a, a new people mover, but it doesn't have to be as long because whatever, the, I don't know what they're doing with that. Autopia submarine area, but they can kind of build like a modified shortened people mover because that would be pretty cool. Like, like a modern high tech with a retro people mover with a retro Tomorrowland. I think that would be uh, people would absolutely go bonkers over something like that. Yeah, I think that's I think that's kind of the smartest direction to go in terms of like having a retro 
future and like having a future uh, as seen, you know, through like, um, you know, like, like, like the future as envisioned in the 1950s or 60s, because that mm -hmm. kind of future aesthetically is really pleasing to the eye and it, it doesn't really age you know it, it, it's kind of a timeless look in a way it kind of always feels like the future so yeah i hope they do that i hope they go in that retro look i wouldn't mind if like you said they brought back the people mover but like with new technology bringing it to the new age that would be pretty cool and especially now you know they can partner up with some really cool companies to sponsor a people mover attraction yeah like they tesla can, Tesla, exactly. <laughs> Tesla or, or Apple or something cool. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of potential there if they want to go in that direction, you know? Yeah. And um, I like what uh, you said on what uh, you spotted something on Twitter, like which attraction should go. You said Autopia. And then I think it commented or I saw some comments and I was like, because uh, that one, you can't really get any more futuristic. I mean, the most futuristic thing with Autopia would be a self driving car. <laughs> But that's like over at Radio Springs Racers, you get a self-driving car, basically. Yeah, so exactly. Then there's you can't really go. The Autopia has definitely reached its ceiling for me. Yeah, Autopia's time has come. I mean, it, I said this in a video like um a couple of days ago. Like outside of making the cars like hover above ground, Back to the Future Two style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there isn't really much you can do to these go karts that are going to make it feel like the future. And even if you tr make them electric that's not the future like you can like you know tesla you, you can you can go to the car dealership and get a tesla those are electric vehicles you can go uh, you know i think ford makes one they all make electric cars they, they're very accessible now it's not like some far off technology that like oh my gosh electric cars like it's pretty normal <laughs> you know it's not the future mm -hmm. anymore yeah i mean my mom has one you see them all over the road they could get a the government gives you a uh an incentive to buy one so they're pretty much like all over the place especially again tests and big things like that so yeah definitely and that's such a i don't know how big that is but you can fit like definitely two big attractions or a small attraction i feel the whole land in autopia's land it's so massive oh it's huge and then if you get rid of autopia you kind of have to get rid of the submarine voyage and between all <laughs> that land between autopia and the subs and the old motorboat area you could probably build two attractions. You could probably build something on the Fantasyland side and on the Tomorrowland side. And it's worth it. You know, it's definitely worth it. Uh, Fantasyland needs an expansion and Tomorrowland definitely needs, you know, upgrades and a reimagining. And Autopia just doesn't fit anymore. It's no longer the future. I mean, it never really was the future in a way, but it just, it's, it's, it's not like the kids are more sophisticated now than they were in like 1955 you know they can go across the park and go pilot the millennium falcon you know driving this little gas guzzling go-kart <laughs> like not a big deal to most kids you know it's just mm -hmm. it's like whatever especially when you, know, you can go down the street to legoland and go in a whole like that little mini city they have with a volvo thing and you know like do an actual like a little mini city which is pretty cool but yeah a lot of um it's even I think the statistics, the statistics came out that um, fewer people are even getting their driver's license or are like rushing to get their driver's license anymore, um, like the newer generation. So they don't even want to drive the car. So get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, let's see here. <laughs> but speaking of new Tomorrowland and Mickey and Minnie, um, I'm sure you put that rumor that's floating around. Um, I guess it started off by WDW Pro on the forums that the, I guess the Avengers and the Mickey and Minnie are at least until April or whatever are on hold until the, they figure out the coronavirus thing. What do you think about that? Do you think it's true? Do you think it's a, uh, just a rumor? What's that? Well, I mean, I, I think it's a rumor. Like, I haven't heard that anywhere else. But at the same time, it's not like, the, it's not too far-fetched. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. Disney's losing a lot of money having Shanghai and I believe Hong Kong. Both of those parks are shut down indefinitely. They're losing a lot of money. So it wouldn't surprise me if Disney was looking for ways to kind of tighten the purse strings while this whole coronavirus thing is going on. Um, but this specific thing, like, you know, being on hold, I don't know. I haven't heard that anywhere else. I, you know, it was just on, the, on those forums. But uh, 
I, I, I mean, that would suck though, if that's true, you know, I, I would hope that they would still go forward with it at least. I mean, yeah. they, they started it. I mean, they, didn't they already break ground on it and everything? Yeah. Making news is the big hole in the ground. So I feel like they at least go forward with that. The other stuff that they haven't started, I kind of makes sense. You can delay it a few months, but yeah. the making minis, you have all this construction uh, equipment on the ground. That's not pretty to look at. And I mean, you already spent the money to dig up the ground and demolish the buildings. They might as well, at least finish that one can't be that much of a loss to at least finish at least that one attraction because then it'll bring more people in to get your money back yeah and i feel like a lot of i mean I, i'm not like a finance expert obviously mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm not that's not my field or whatever oh yeah i mean but neither. yeah but i mean I, I would assume that a lot of these attractions are kind of like the, the money end of it is done long before the construction starts and again that's just my assumption i don't know that for sure but I, I would find like i would see I, I would assume that's the case and i just feel like mickey minnie's runaway railway for disneyland was probably paid for long before shovels hit the dirt you know mm -hmm. but i mean i hope that's the case but we'll yeah. see now it makes sense because i mean they spent you know all the money in designing the attraction and doing all the blueprints to try to fit into the space and i feel like you know, when he's poured so much money in that already to just not finish it or to delay it, I feel like it would cost even more money because then you have to, the construction crews are waiting to, you know, be paid and stuff. So I feel like to get it, um, to pay them immediately and get it done faster would actually might even save them money in the long term. But like I said, I'm a, like you said, we're not finance majors, so I don't know, but <laughs> it just seems like logically that would make sense. But I guess I'm kind of, uh, put, uh, feels better because in Tomorrowland, um, even with the new entrance, I feel like, you know, I always feel like for some reason Tomorrowland gets delayed of even further, you know? There's always, yeah, our Tomorrowland is, is it's always a bridesmaid, never a bride. We, we <laughs> never see the, that special day where, where our Tomorrowland gets the love. I, I don't understand it. It's always delayed. It's always something. <laughs> it's like it's never meant, or it's meant to have these tiny little pieces that take a, a three decades to eventually <laughs> come true. I feel like then Hollywood Land is like a, DCA is Tomorrowland, and the same thing. It's just there's always something happening. That's a the uh, um, whether you know like the Eastern Gateway thing with the fight with the city of Anaheim. There's always something happening to delay the uh, what should be the inevitable uh, demolition of both of those things. Maybe maybe both of those lands were built on like you know Indian uh, yeah, uh, burial great, grounds yeah. and they're cursed. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised they're able to even. Yeah. I never th thought I'd see the day when those rocks would be gone. I was surprised they did that. And yeah. no, no issues. And at least get some semblance of a new entrance. Which is, that's pretty cool. At least that's a start. You know, yeah. usually when you get the ball rolling, then it makes it easier for the other things to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We'll get it. We'll get it. And from what I'm hearing, um, Joe Rody is is heading the Tomorrowland project for us. Mm -hmm. which is cool i mean joe Rody, he he's a, he's like an incredible imagineer and it'll be interesting to see what he brings to the table because joe Rody, a lot of his stuff has to do with like it's more earthy you know like mm -hmm. animal kingdom and things like yeah. that that's kind of like his shtick right mm -hmm. so it'll be kind of interesting to see what he brings to the table when it comes to tomorrowland because that's a totally different kind of thing mm -hmm. well he's bringing in the earth with the new plants already so hey. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then um, but yeah, they, I mean, they freaking showed it on the imaginary story of him taking off the carousel uh, progress footing. So I know there's something in the works. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, and, and, and you know, they, they cleverly edited the rest of that clip because after he took it off, he threw it in the trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they edited that part out, though. <laughs> yeah, they just, he went and then boom, and then yep. it just cuts right boom. to the next scene. He cut some like rock and roller coaster, which. Could be another uh, early uh, potential of a re-theme of our Hollywood studios. But um, let's see. Oh, and then this Friday, we finally get our new daytime parade. Magic happens. The floats look pretty cool, in my opinion. I like the gold color that, you know, that, they're, that they're going for. Um, what do you think? You, you saw the first look video, right? I did see the first look video. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. And, you know, I love the idea that they're, that they're utilizing an IP 
um, that they don't usually utilize with Sword in the Stone. I thought that was really cool that Merlin is going to be in the parade and everything. That's definitely something different. You know, a lot of times with Disneyland Entertainment, whether it be firework shows, water shows, parades, they use the same IP, the same characters, the same movies for every Get single thing. Get all frozen. It, it, yeah, it's either frozen, let it go, <laughs> under the sea with mermaid, I see the light with Tangled. Like, it's always the same stuff over and over again. So it was really <laughs> refreshing when we saw that float for, for Merlin. I thought, okay, that's cool. That's cool. You know, so it's just yeah, different. So. And, I, and I love, I don't know if you're familiar with Todrick Hall, but I oh, love Oh, yeah, my work. friend, Ashley. Um, when I met her, she's like, "Do you know Tajik Hall?" I'm like, "No." So we she spent like hours watching his YouTube videos. I'm like, "Oh, he's pretty creative. I like the, his different videos. And I like his musical style." So I'm excited for the, like you said, yeah, that theme song coming up, and I'm awesome that he's working on it. Should be pretty awesome. Did did you did you ever get a chance? To, I'll send it to you if you haven't. It's hilarious. Did you see his Beauty and the Beast um um uh, parody uh video? I don't think so. I saw the one like all the Disney, where it's like every single Disney princess, and then he's the Disney prince. Like there's like a like five. He's like five of them. And they're trying to they're um they're, like going to like breakups, and then he was like it was kind of I forgot what it was called. It was super funny. But yeah, definitely send it to me because that sounds funny. I'll send it to you. It's like it's Belle, and <laughs> she sings her opening song from the movie, but she lives in like in like the hood. <laughs> and like it's it's hilarious it's so so funny i'll send it to you and you guys when you're for those of you watching check it out todrick hill beauty and the beast on youtube you'll find it it'll pop up it's so funny it'll crack you up <laughs> man but yeah that's a super i think um will you be down there this weekend to see it are you gonna be able to this weekend yeah if i don't work yeah I, my work schedule's been crazy i want to i really really want to see it cool because yeah i think i'll be there friday or sunday um to see cool. the parade the film and, um listen, yeah it's nice to have a daytime parade again i'm still ooh, i was looking i was in the world of disney one time last time i was at disney in a few weeks so and i was at no i heard the instrumental for um Paint the night, and I was like, "Man, now I really missed this story. I already, I already missed it." But then the world Disney, Disney's over here teasing me with playing the instrumental, the piano version of uh, the theme song to Paint the Night, um, in the Disney store. I'm like, "Wow, I could listen to this all day long." I tried to Shazam it, but nothing would come up. Like, man, I need this piano version of When Can. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw your video, um, I think it was last week, maybe the week before that, where you, you kind of you, you were showing how Paint the Night is on the dining package, um, yeah, section of the app, and that's interesting. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's on the dining package, and then someone else posted that it's just like also like there like as it's they're getting ready to put like its own page back i mean it just says paint the night parade but when you click on it you get an error message but it's there as if they're ready to set up its own like parade page again so i'm hoping maybe that can source a summer avengers campus opening although i think um i'd rather have that but that'd be so i think like a marvel parade and a star wars parade i, th I know i mentioned this before but like a disneyland or maybe even just the Galaxy Edge specific like Star Wars parade. I know that'll break the whole you're living in a room. Oh, no, it really wouldn't break the you're living in a, a city thing because they have cell people have cities have celebrations all the time. But that'd be so like, what do you think of like a Star Wars parade or like a Marvel parade? It kind of marches through Avengers Campus or like Galaxy Edge. I think that would really, oh, well, that's the entertainment factor, but also be just pretty cool because people love that. Yeah, actually, I would love to see both of those. And, and and actually, there was a rumor. I think it was on Mice Chat Al Lutz years ago about a Mar about a Marvel parade coming to DCA. I think it was around the time of like the 60th anniversary or something like that. It was like four or five years ago. But I think a Marvel parade would be very cool. And if if they can't do a full blown Marvel parade, then add a Marvel float to paint the night. And we get the mm. best of both worlds. We get Paint the Night and a Marvel float. You know, that would be awesome. You could do so much. Like Marvel's one of those franchises where you can actually do a lot when it comes to parades. You know, you can have a massive Hulk float and mm. you can have some pretty cool stuff in those floats, you know? Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, there's like so much, especially with the acquisition of the Fox properties, there's so much Marvel content and so many characters they can even choose some if they want to highlight a lesser known character, try to get a more popular or something. Like there's so many, uh, and even with Star Wars, there's so many characters and uh, especially with Star Wars with the machines and all their ships and different alien looking creatures. I mean, a Star Wars parade should be like a no brainer. Yeah, I know. I would love a Star Wars parade. Like you said, I mean, they could have some sort of like, you know, galactic celebration or whatever and, and, mm-hmm. and have it in universe, you know, and have it go through Galaxy's Edge. That would be, it would be very, very cool. Yeah. Is certain, the Wapnets are certainly big enough and the land is certainly big enough to have a parade kind of enter by Rise of the Resistance or, or either enter by Rise of the Resistance and exit by Smugglers Run that backstage area or vice versa. And just have like again the biggest you know you don't need like massive floats or anything but you no know, maybe just like a kind of a marching band and like some and some alien characters walking around and then you know like you know like a typical like parade type of thing yeah and it would add or, it would add yeah. a lot of kinetic energy to the land which a lot of people say the the land really needs right now you know mm-hmm. like you said you can have like three or four smaller floats with like aliens playing music you know mm-hmm. and it, it would be pretty fun it would be very fun actually. Yeah, that would that definitely attract even more people to the to the empty air quotes <laughs> galaxy's yeah, yeah. edge. <laughs> the it's a empty. failure. <laughs> <laughs> even though every time I go, I wait an hour to ride Smuggler's Run, but not many people in that line. <laughs> yeah, it's a failure. Um, and see, lastly, oh yes, I saw your video on the DVC or the or the new DVC tower, and. <laughs> I noticed yeah, basically the same exact opinion as me, which is great. I think actually most people would either have the same opinion or would like um, this opinion. And that it remind well from when I saw the concept art, it looked it remind, it reminded me of the uh, or of the older Disneyland hotel towers, but like a newer version of them. I'm like, wow, they can put this there. And then one by one demolish each other demolish each of the Disneyland hotel towers and make them like this. That would be a really good solution to the aging Disneyland hotel property. Yeah, it would be a great solution. Like you know, this is the thing. Like Disneyland Hotel, and I mentioned this in my video. It, it's it sort of has the same problem that Tomorrowland has. And that they just want to like repaint it over and over and over again and redress it over and over and over again. But the towers are really outdated and they look like old towers, even though they've been, you know, renovated a few times and everything. Um, So yeah, like you said, I would love them to go one by one, tear down one tower at a time and rebuild each tower in a similar style to the, to the DVC tower. Mm -hmm. And you know, that DVC tower is so perfect because it's, it's retro it kind of pays homage to the old towers, but yet it still feels new. Mm-hmm. And to do that throughout the entire hotel complex would be so much fun. I would wish I wish they would do that. I really do. And with that new hotel, the well, the cancel hotel, I felt uh, you know, since it was so close to the original design hotel, I felt like that was their plan or their plan was you know to build that, but then quickly demolish the Disneyland hotel since it was like they're almost like like right in back of each other i felt like their plan was basically that was going to be the replacement hotel because you know it doesn't make sense to have there's like no space there so i, I definitely feel like the disneyland hotel those original towers weren't uh weren't going to be around for too much longer after that new hotel was no, built. yeah i completely agree with you ethan and i think i mentioned that in a video as well like because it, it, we never got like an official name to that new hotel. We never got an official theme to that new hotel. And it kind of, I, I felt that like due to the placement, it was, it was definitely like they're going to build a new hotel and then they're going to bulldoze the old Disneyland hotel. And this was going to be our new Disneyland hotel. That's what it really looked like. That's what it felt like. And then I, I guess with this whole thing with the city and all the tax stuff that went on with that, they ended up canceling it. So that's probably why we got the DVC tower, the new tower, because the plans changed. They're no, we're no longer getting that new hotel. But uh, definitely, I think the original plan was to 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 have this new this new hotel be the replacement to the Disneyland hotel, and that's why they never announced the name. Because if they announced mm-hmm. the name of the new hotel, people would know this is the replacement because it's probably going to be the Disneyland Hotel, you know? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, the replacement, there's just like, made no, there's, there's 
completely obvious. Like, obviously, you just want to have one old hotel center. They're like five feet apart from each other. I'm like, wow. Then my theory, my thought also was that maybe they, well, I know there's going to have, they're, they're going to have some retail space in the hotel to bring some of those lost restaurants back. But I thought maybe that space, the, the now demo, what would then be the demolishes in hotel towers, maybe they add some more retail space to kind of bring all the restaurants back they that would be demolished at West End of Downtown Disney, which is still sitting vacant. Man, what do you want them to do with that? What, what would you like to come into the Rainforest Cafe building and the e, uh, AMC, AMC building? I would like to see more themed. I, you know, okay. I honestly, I, I am really into the themed bars. I, I love what they did with Trader Sam's. And oh, yeah, I, that's really cool. It's awesome. And, and I also love like even stuff that Florida has been getting, like with the Jock Lindsay, like Indiana Jones themed bar and things like mm-hmm. that. I would like to see more things like that come to downtown Disney. Um, you know, just stuff that's like fun that you can go with your friends or your family and just kind of have a good time and enjoy. It. Like it's like themed entertainment, but you're, you're kicking back, you're having a drink or two, you're having dinner. That, that's what I would like to see, you know? Um, I, I could do without a lot of the retail stuff. Mm-hmm. That's just me, though. I mean, I know a lot of people like that stuff, and there's definitely a market for it. But for me, I'd rather see, like, themed bars, yeah. um, maybe some more entertainment, like the VR experience, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, th- th- that's what I would like to ultimately see end up happening with uh, Downtown Disney. Um, um, yeah, I, I agree. Because kind of the stores kind of make it like uh, just a net. A generic mall type of thing. Like I can go down the street and go to Sephora or and, and yeah. Jamba Juice. But um, so ultimate question: Which one do you prefer, City Walk or Downtown Disney? Ooh, um, in terms of shopping complexes, I think um, I think City Walk is the stronger complex in terms of just like I don't know. I've always liked City Walk. I, I've always liked yeah, City Walk. It look, it's like a little mini Las Vegas with all the it neon. Is, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of fun. And um, yeah, I, I just think it's a better executed shopping district mm-hmm. than downtown. And it's uh, multiple stories, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it's multiple cool. stories. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I think they, City Walk is the, better, is the better version of that, of that concept for sure. And they have um, some unique uh, – food like eaters you can find anywhere else like especially the new ones like uh, <laughs> Anzahitos and Vivo they're, they're bringing a lot of Florida's concepts here like, like I'm super excited for that uh, Toothsome Emporium replacing a chocolate, uh, Hard Rock Cafe because I absolutely love chocolate so I'm super excited for um, that coming next year but hopefully at yeah, Disney maybe hopefully Disney will bring some Disney Springs concepts over and then you know even though they're kind of renovating downtown disney already but maybe we'll bring some disney springs concepts over for the the back half of downtown disney because it it always seems you know city walk at least like at all times of the day city walk always seems a little bit busier to me than a downtown disney if you're with people like actually hanging out there not just heading like just the parks you know yeah and i think that city walk also is sort of fortunate in the sense that they're kind of they're not chained to like like with disney they have like such a family disney has such a squeaky clean like image to uphold there's mm-hmm. certain limitations as to what they can have in their downtown disney where city walk doesn't really have that universal is a little edgier they can have a nightclub they did they used to have the what's that what's that place called was it saddle ranch or whatever oh yeah saddle ranch yeah, yeah. that was like a, that was like basically a club you know you could do like yeah, oh, yeah the bowl and bowl. Stuff. that was pretty cool yeah but see you, you would never see like a, a like a club at downtown disney because it's not it's not it's it's disney's more squeaky clean than that and they're not going to ever put that kind of thing in their in their shopping district at least i don't think they would maybe, maybe they'll surprise me maybe they will one day i don't know yeah, but I'd be um, super surprised. I'm like, what? Disney has a club? Uh, yeah, I'd be like, that's weird. But I mean, yeah, uh, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But Universal, they they don't have that same limitation. They can be a little edgier and get away with it. And Disney sort of has to be a little more careful as to what they put in there, you know? Yeah, and it's you know, funny with Disney and Universal. Even speaking of um replacing things, um, yeah, yeah, like uh. It kind of goes back, you know, to the rides too. Like Universal always replaces rides, and I feel like like 
everyone just, oh, well, yeah, that's good, or they don't really care. But, you know, people have such a strong attachment to Disney rides that one of them, well, one of them gets replaced, everyone like, freaks out. I always find that super interesting. I'm like, wow, everyone has this emotional connection to Disney rides, but when the Universal replaces something, the Universal can get away with that, almost whatever they want because they're like, oh, it's going away, but better, something, something better is coming. They're like, oh, I don't care because I don't care about it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's the thing. Like with Disney, the, the nostalgia factor is literally the gift and the curse. It's the mm-hmm. gift because it, it keeps people coming back over and over and over again because it's like the nostalgia factor is so high, you know? Mm-hmm. But then the nostalgia factor is also the reason why fans get so mad, you know? So mm-hmm. it's like, it is, it's a gift and the curse. Universal, they can bulldoze pretty much their entire park here in Hollywood and no one would bat an eyelash. They, we would all just clap and be like, yay. <laughs> like, ooh, we're finally getting whatever Florida's getting. <laughs> Can't wait for the next thing, you know? But in Disneyland, <laughs> like they change, you know, the, the railings on on main street or what i don't know any little mm-hmm. thing they, they change a bench and their fans are all up in arms over it it's just yeah it's like disney's like a <laughs> yeah. religious experience you know people like <laughs> yeah. it's so personal to so many people which is a good thing mm-hmm. it's just that it's really hard for disney to ever change anything because the fans mm-hmm. get so they're so emotionally wrapped up into it you know mm-hmm. like yeah uh, and i think actually um uh in the fresh pit construction video even just between Disneyland and California Adventure, because um, they talked about how everyone was, I, I guess, concerned about the sight lines for Galaxy's Edge when they were building it. But um, uh, Dave, or uh, from Fresh Break, they, um, with the Avengers Campus in Cars Land, they found like a potential sight line issue and that like, gets towards Luigi's. And, He's like, why is no one talking about this? He's like, I guess no one has the, emo- that emotional connection even to DCA as they do with the, the Disneyland sight lines and like, or like, no one cares. I'm like, yeah, I guess so. Because that is sure when it was like, oh my gosh, is this going to be an eyesore galaxy judge? It's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin the sight lines and no one's saying, oh, how about Avengers Campus? They're like, oh, well, that's like a hodgepodge of a theme park anyway, I guess. That's like, yeah, and that's sad to me. That's sad to me, actually, that when, when I see fans do that. Because, you know, to me, I want to see DCA on the same level of, as Disneyland. Like, I don't, see it, I don't see it as like, oh, well, that's not Disneyland, so they can, it can be whatever. Like, mm-hmm. it sits in the shadow of Disneyland. It's mm-hmm. literally, like, 100 feet away from Disneyland. I want that park to be top-notch. Like, because it sits so close to the park it's it's basically it's sister park yeah you know? and that's why i don't understand when fans are like kind of blow dca off like oh i don't care they can they can throw in whatever garbage they can throw in <laughs> it doesn't matter to me well like i care it's like <laughs> yeah. I care. it's like it's like your house right mm-hmm. like even though like if someone took their trash and dumped it all over the street outside of your house down down the whole street of, of, of the block that you sit on technically it's not like in front of you it's not on your property but it's still mm-hmm affects your property it's still all outside out front you know what i'm saying and i feel the same way with dca like even though it's not in disney it's not disneyland per se it still sits on the property it's still so close by you still want it to be an amazing park you know yeah and i agree like that should be the the, <laughs> the best possible thing you can be especially it says it's like literally like 10 steps 10 good strides and you're boom at crossing the gates i mean the gates to disneyland back up to dc is gates for every morning for smugglers run i mean rise of the resistance so it definitely should it's definitely such in the shadow and kind of sucks for uh dc though because it's always gonna be in, inevitably always compared to disneyland whatever the next two thing comes because it's right there it's right and, there and it's like oh man so the poor guy gets the short end of the stick all the time because it's like, oh, well, Disneyland's right there, and you're not as good as that one. So, ha, you suck. Yeah, yeah it's unfortunate. I've always loved DCA. I've always loved that park, and, and it's gotten a lot better. And I think that a lot of the new additions with the Marvel stuff, like the, the Stuntronic Spider-Man mm-hmm. and the Avengers E-Ticket and all that stuff is really going to is really gonna help the park a lot. Um you know, kind of differentiate itself and give itself something that's worth going to that you can't get at Disneyland, you know? So, mm-hmm. um, 
but it needs more of that, you know? And, and I think DCA needs another family attraction. It needs something, a big family dark ride. Hopefully Hollywood land is the home for something like that down the road. But, um, yeah, I love DCA. You know, I do. I've always loved DCA. Yeah. I think I wish more people did. Um, that's a pretty cool part. You know, it has all the festivals and the world of color is nice and the parade and, that's some pretty cool, decent rides as well. So I like it too. Oh, well, well, if that looks like just about it. So thank you for joining me. Go subscribe to Orange Go 55 on YouTube and follow him on Twitter. And oh, you don't have Instagram. So just Twitter. You have Facebook? No, you don't have Facebook. Twitter. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and um, YouTube and Twitter, Orange Go 55. And, um, subscribe to my channel for constant theme park updates. And as always, have a fantastic day. I get back.